I guess it's uh, I guess it's literally going to take and concatenate these uh, concatenate these. What I'll take and I'll I'll literally take and concatenate these files together to uh, produce the final video here. This is actually the first time I've used this particular device, so uh, I'm still kind of getting used to it. As here, like I said before, we're booting up. This particular splash screen was put together using the excellent splashy utility. Um, it is for, it is an awesome piece of software. We're, uh, well worth the time to get to know to use it. Much better than U Splash and Boot Splash. It's better than Boot Splash because it's unlike Boot Splash, it is a user space modification. And unlike U Splash, uh, Splashy comes with some very nice utilities to help make uh, the system very easy to configure your own custom Boot Splashes with a wide variety of options. So now that we have this configured, it's going to go into X here and back to our wonderful splash screen. I want to take and patch X to get rid of the stipple. But uh, you'll see right here in the right uh, upper right hand corner for a moment you'll see rat poison start to come up. And if you have had other orbiters before you see the familiar uh, progress meter. Now uh, since I do have my Bluetooth dongle attached uh, it is. It has com come on and off the network a few times, so it's asking me to reload. I won't. And here we are. For those of you who have seen the orbiter and whatnot on your typical Nokia pads, uh, you'll actually see that um, this is actually it's the same. Main difference is the uh, text and whatnot is actually considerably larger, much more readable, and uh, you know a lot more wield. Uh, you know a lot more wieldy, I guess. Very nice, very easy to read, and very easy to use. Now, of course, um, it works the same way. I can hit off, you know, the lighting controls are the same. Nice and responsive. Turn them back on for a moment. And overall, the interactive control is very nice and very responsive. I'll go ahead and select a few lights on my lighting control plan here. And turn them down to, say, 30% or so. Very nice, very easy, very effective, and really easy to use. You can pretty much tell that Pluto had this particular form factor in mind when they designed Orbiter in the first place. So, but also too, since it is an Orbiter and it's connected to the rest of the system, I can do things like select media pretty easily and pretty effectively. And as you can tell, the responsiveness is actually quite nice. And the buttons are actually big enough the buttons are actually big enough to make selections very easy. In the past, especially on the Nokia Orbiter, if you actually notice, in comparison, I'll go ahead and pick up my Nokia Orbiter here, just as a size comparison here. I'll go into my video section here. You'll notice that the buttons, uh, in comparison to this guy, are much smaller and require a bit more finagling to get access to. Whereas on this particular display, the orbit, the uh, the buttons are actually very nice and very easy to get to, and well placed on your hands. So even though these are the right size and these cover your hand quite nicely, the particular button pads and button direction pads don't work very, you know, aren't, don't work quite as well. So, yeah, we can go ahead and scroll down a bit quite easily, go through the list. But more importantly too, a lot of the aspects that were more it more difficult to use on things like the Nokia Orbiter are actually a lot easier to use here. Uh, for example, I've gone into options here to filter my stuff and I'm going to go directly into search because search has the on-screen keyboard. Now the on-screen keyboard here as you can see is actually a lot more readable and I'm going to uh, look for something to watch. Let's see history. I'm just going to type. And you can keep typing. It will just buffer itself. As it types, it finds it. Well, there's uh, a history of violence right there. No problem. We hit play. And as you can see, our remote Quite nice, quite easy to use, nice big buttons.
And quite nice, quite easy, responsive. Volume controls. Of course, our lights. Turn them up a bit. And there's our movie. See? Ready to go. Quite nice. But where the tablet really starts to shine, of course, is in an area where previously the Nokia pad wasn't all that great. Uh, as a slight aside here, uh, the text here is actually quite easy to read, quite readable, quite approachable. But also, now, let's go to computing. Now in computing here, I have a whole series of my bookmarks, things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. just so that I can thumb That's through things idea. pretty easily. Stand now, I'm wow. going to go ahead and just look quickly look on Facebook to see how things are going here. I think I'm tired. Yeah. And you'll see our web browser here configuring itself, putting itself into play, bringing up my Facebook. Yeah. Bring it on up the office. Now as this loads up, I'm going to show you some of the details here with working with the keyboard because I think some of you have seen this but weren't quite sure how this worked. This is the on-screen keyboard and you'll notice that it's the same thing here too. You'll notice there's the same thing here too, just um, a bit smaller. The keys are a bit too big for my fingers here. Tap, 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 tap. Whereas here, the keys are just the right size for the tip of my finger. And I'm going to um, actually go through now and log on to Facebook. Because it's already logged me off. But as we log in, you'll see, now we're logged into Facebook. But I'm going to show you now. You'll notice this white area up here at the top. This is actually the mouse pad. Now, I want to replace this with something a bit better, but for now, this is how this works. You'll notice that there's a red dot here in the middle of the screen. This is the absolute, uh, this means don't move an inch. And the farther away that I move from this spot, the more it moves the mouse pointer in that direction. So in essence, it works a lot like the touchpad on a typical laptop. But because there is currently no drag action, it is a bit unusual. So the farther, the farther left or farther right or farther up or down that you that you tap, it moves the mouse by roughly that much on screen. So if I tap right here, it only moves the mouse a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a bit so you can see. The mouse is down here at the bottom. I'm just going to take and tap just a tad bit on the right, and you'll see that the mouse starts to move in that direction just a little bit. But as I move, as I tap closer to the edges, in the back, in the office. it actually takes and taps in that direction. Now combine that with the, uh, combine that with the uh, action of the keyboard and whatnot, and you have a fully capable web terminal here. It does take a little get getting used to, but once you get used to it, you can navigate and use the web and whatnot quite effectively. So, and of course, since you have the full screen keyboard here, it actually is possible to do simple things like check your email or, or um, you know, check up on things. Do simple things that you wouldn't have to bounce over to the computer for right here from your TV, and it works really well in that regard. So now that I'm basically done, I'm going to go ahead and just hit the power, and that will shift me back to the movie that I'm watching. So, I mean, as you can see, tap back, and you can see that um, no matter what, 
all of my orbiters and stuff stay in sync. And it's very and it very easy to use, very effective, and pretty e I mean just overall this particular touchscreen with this size, this form factor makes this whole thing very a dream to use, really much so. Especially when combined with the um, ease of use and whatnot of the cell phone. Let's say I want to go ahead and play uh, How Soon Is Now, you know. Pretty easy. But it also goes hand in hand. You'll notice that it stays in sync with my Nokia Orbiter just fine, too. I'll go ahead and change the song here. As you can see, everything stays in sync. But also, on my cell phone. See? Go down a little bit. So, I mean, yeah, there you go. I guess this basically concludes my little demonstration here of uh, pad orbiter. So if you're interested in these particular orbiters and whatnot, uh, you can contact TK Media both in the forums and on IRC chat. Uh, we do have uh, we do have these uh, particular orbiter devices. They're uh, you know two uh, two fifty configured with the orbiter ready to go. Oh, I do want to show you one particular piece of. Uh, piece of uh, software here. Now when you first boot the orbiter up into place there is a uh, network configuration applet which uh, basically configures all of the network settings and you can get to that either the first time you boot up the tablet or if you need to change those settings for some reason you can tap the network configuration button here and once you do that it resets the tablet real quick And it brings up my custom tablet configuration program. Now, you'll notice here too, you've got uh, fields for um, your network ESSID and key, uh, and your network encryption types as well. So you can set things like, uh, you know, what security type, none, WEP, WPA, PSK. Uh, but you also have a complete on-screen keyboard so that you can do all of your typing and everything here without having to hook anything up. In fact, that's the final that's the final goal for this is to literally just um, is to just plug in the stick, let it flash the tablet, and once it's done, that's pretty much it. So I'll hit cancel and it will config reconfigure itself and go right back into the orbiter again. So there you go. So, I mean, I hope this has been an effective demonstration, guys. Uh, I mean, like I said, uh, these things are available and there are a lot of them. So if you're interested, contact TK Media in the IRC channel. These things are very affordable and very competitive, even with the Nokia N810s, like on my couch here. And they make wonderful uh, counterparts to any other control devices that you have in your home. You could, for example, mount these on your walls or whatever. Um, whatever you want them for. And they're lightweight and you can carry them around too. So, I mean, there you go. I hope to see you guys soon. Let's, uh, I still have some more HA Designer stuff to take care uh, to do for you guys, more screencasts to do. And I still have the second part of the media management screencast to do for you guys. So, um, until next time, see ya.